Morning, sixth grade. Uh, welcome to lesson 22 in math. We'll start with your fact practice. Hopefully, you got the quiz done. The front side answers read like this as we continue to work our vocabulary that goes along with circles. The distance around a circle is its circumference. Every point on the circle is the same distance from its center. The distance across a circle through its center is the diameter. The distance from the circle to the center is a radius. Two or more circles with the same center are called concentric circles. The segment between two points on a circle is called a chord. The part of a circumference is an arc. The part of the circle bound by an arc and two radii is a sector. Half a circle is a semicircle. An angle whose vertex is the center is a central angle. An angle whose vertex is on the circle is an inscribed angle. And then a polygon whose vertices are on the circle is an inscribed polygon. All right, your mental math answer should read like this. A, you added, and I got $2.53. Now remember, it's mental math, guys. So what I did is I added a dollar, got two fifty-four, dollars and then subtracted one penny off it. Times 100 slides that decimal right twice, you got $8. Subtract, you got $2.11. Multiplied, you got 371 Added, you have 5 when you're done. Fraction of it is 6. What's it? Greater two gallons, or I mean a gallon or two quarts, there's four quarts in a gallon, guys, so a gallon is greater than two quarts. Start with the number of years in a half a century. Century is 100, half of it would be 50. Add the number of inches in half a foot, that would be 6. Divide by the number of days in the week, which was 7. So I was 50 plus 6 is 56, divided by 7 is 8. Name the polygon that has 8 sides. That's called an octagon. Great problem. Problem solving says this, Yin has 25 tickets, Bobby has 12, Mary has 8. How many tickets should Yin give to Bobby and to Mary so that they'll all have the same number of tickets? So same number of tickets is average, guys. So what I did is I wrote down my number of tickets to find average, I have to add them all together. So 2 plus 8 is 10, plus 5 is 15, carry the 1. 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. Now I got added to 45, now I have to divide that by 3 because there's 3 people. That goes in there once, one, 15. So each person needs 15. Now the question is, what should Yin do? Yin should give seven to Mary, and Yin should give three to whoever the other guy was. Sorry, I forgot the name already. Um, so that they each have 15. So he's giving away a total of 10. Three to here, and seven to there, so they all have the same number of tickets. So it wasn't just how many should each have, it was making sure you understand you had to write down Yin gives seven to Mary and three to Bob or Johnny or whoever it was. Okay, let's get started on our lesson for today. We're going to talk about problems about a fraction of a group. Uh, if you remember last week, we ended with lesson 21, composite and prime numbers. Remember, prime numbers have exactly two factors. So it starts with the number two, which is the only even prime number. And then you had that list. We're going to work with a lot of prime numbers between uh, 1 and 100. And that's in your yellow folder if you need to reference that. And then we're going to spend a lot of time, even on uh, these next few lessons, working that prime factorization to reduce fractions and things like that. Your lesson reads like this. In lesson 13, we looked at problems about equal groups. In lesson 14, we considered problems about parts of a whole. In this lesson, we will solve problems that involve both equal groups and parts of a whole. Many of the problems will require two or more steps to solve. Consider the following statement. Two-thirds of the students in the class wore sneakers on Monday. We can draw a diagram for the statement. We use a rectangle to represent all the students. Next, we divide it into three equal parts. Then we describe the parts. So two-thirds of them wore sneakers. One-third of them did not wear sneakers. If we know how many students are in the class, we can figure out how many students are in each part. Two-thirds of the 27 students in the class wore sneakers on Monday. There are 27 students in all. If we divide the group of 27 students into three equal parts, there would be nine students in each part. We write these numbers on our diagram. Okay. Now the question is, why do we divide the rectangle into three equal parts rather than any number of equal parts? Because of the denominator. Whatever the denominator is, that's what we're dividing by. At the bottom, since two-thirds of the students wore sneakers, we add two of the parts and find that 18 students wore sneakers. Since one-third did not wear sneakers, we find that nine students did not wear sneakers. And then we got a couple of examples to work with, guys. Okay, if you're in your yellow folder, you can see I didn't give you any directions about drawing diagrams. 
Drawing diagrams is one option. I'm going to show you two other options. If you're in your yellow folder, my first option says divide by the denominator and then multiply your answer, the quotient, by the numerator. So when I get these problems, I like to divide by the denominator, multiply by the numerator, done. But all these problems are to say the word of, and you've been taught this year, of means multiply. So you're going, Mr. Bauer, there was the word of there, you told me to multiply, but now you're saying divide first. It doesn't matter. When I do the um, multiplication, I multiply and then divide. When I do division, it's division and then multiply. It's the same thing. Now there's a third way, guys. That third way is drawing your diagram. The second way I can do it is using the word of. I wrote of means multiply. Put the number over one and multiply fractions. So I'll show you what I mean in this next problem. It says, diagram this statement, then answer the questions that follow. Two-fifths of the 30 students in the class were boys. Okay, if you want to follow the directions from your book, it said, said diagram. So I got my class, I divide it into fifths, two-fifths were boys, three-fifths were girls, I think I did that right, two-fifths were boys. So this up here is boys, this down here is girls. I take my 30, I divide it by 5, which would be 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. Good. Now I go back and I answer the two questions. Question A says, how many boys were in the class? 6 plus 6 is 12 boys. How many girls were in the class? 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18 girls. Okay, now I'll show you uh, the first one in my notes. It says 2 fifths of the 30 were boys. Divide by 5, 6, multiply by the 2, 12. Okay, that's really good to give me A, isn't it? I know how many boys there are. Now the question is, how do I figure out what B is? Well, i got a choice. I could do the opposite of 2 fifths, which is 3 fifths. Or I could say, if 12 are boys and there's a total of 30, I could just make that a subtraction problem and get my 18 girls. Both works. The third way is, you see the word of, you say it's multiplication. Here's what I put in your notes. You've got to put your whole number over 1, and then you just multiply. Now, I like to cancel first. So 5 goes into 36 times. 2 times 6 is 12, and I have my answer for 12 boys. Choice 1, choice 2, choice 3. It doesn't matter to me. Now, guys, having said that, your book said diagram statement. You don't have to do that if you're going to choose this choice or this choice. And so this, I think, is fast but it takes time to draw it. This I'm doing math right away, but now after I get my answer, I have to subtract to get the other one, where here you're just going, boom, six plus six plus six, and you have it. Let's see the other way they'll do it, and that's number two. In the following statement, change the percent to a fraction. Then diagram the statement to answer the questions. Britt read 80% of a 40-page book in one day. What fraction of the book did she read in one day? So the first thing I have to do is write a fraction. Now guys, we know how to reduce fractions. Percent means out of a hundred. So I got 80 over 100. I subtract, cross out the zeros. And then I see that they're both even, so I'm dividing by 2 over 2. That equals 4 fifths. I just answered A, 4 fifths. Now B says, how many pages did she read in one day? So I put 40, I divided it by 5, got an 8, I multiplied it by the 4, and got 32 pages she read in one day. So this one is a problem that your book's giving you because they're practicing reducing fractions on top of it to get your answer. Okay, Diagrammed would have been 40, chopped into fifths, eight in each one, and she read four of those in one day, and you would take that and get 32. Personally, I like this one. You do what's best for you guys. You've got to know you and how math clicks for you so that you understand those problems to be able to get there um, to solve those problems. Okay, hopefully you had shown that work for those example two problems on the back side of your quiz. Remember, we're paying the price to do math. They only gave you two. They gave you a practice set with a lot more. Some students do those practice problems to get it, get it pounded into their head. You know you're going to face this a long time. And then we'll get set with your 22 answer key as we work our problems. All right, six, here we go on lesson 22's. Word problems, you can see we start with number two that reads like this. If the total number of students in problem one were equally divided among three rooms, how many students would be in each room? So you see we got to go back 
to number one and add our students together. So it says there was 28 in the first classroom, there was 30 in the next classroom, and there was 23 in the classroom after that. So I add those all together. I get a one, carry another one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had 81 students. Now I'm gonna divide those evenly among the three classrooms. And so three goes into eight twice, that's a six. Subtract two, bring down the one, goes in there seven. So there's 27 students in each classroom when I divide them evenly. Number four, write a formula for the perimeter of the square. Perimeter equals sides. How many sides on a square? Four. So I take the side, length, which is S, times the number of four. A landscape planner designed a square garden that is 24 feet long per side. What's the perimeter needed to surround it? So now I stick 24 into that. Remember, letter next to a number means multiply. So I got four times 24. 16, eight, one, nine. It is gonna be a total of 96 feet. Number five. Diagram this sentence and answer the question that follows. Five ninths of the 36 spectators were happy with the outcome. How many spectators were happy with the outcome? So I'm going to do five ninths of 36. Divide by nine is four times the five equals 20. So 20 spectators were happy. Second question is how many then were not happy? I take my answer and subtract it from the total. Six minus two. 0 is 6, 3 minus 2 is 1, 16 spectators were not happy, okay? I like the divide and then multiply plan. Number 6, in the following statement, change the percent to reduce fraction, then diagram the statement, answer the question. 25% of the three dozen plants are blooming. What fraction of the plants are not blooming? Okay, so they gave me 25%, guys. 25% out of 100, you know, equals 1 fourth. Divide by 25 over 25 gives me 1 fourth. That's not what they asked me in A. What they asked me in A is what fraction are not blooming. So I need to do the opposite. I know a total is 4 fourths. I subtract 1 fourth, sorry for that line. And 4 minus 1 is 3 fourths. So 3 fourths are not blooming. That's your answer to A. B says how many plants are not blooming. Now I take my fraction and I work it through the number of plants. Now the number of plants are three dozen. I know there's 12 in a dozen. I know I have three of those, so that's 36. So I had to do these two steps here, guys, to just be able to solve my problem. You see what your math book instantly does to make it a step more challenging. I divide four into 36, I get nine. I take three times nine and I get 27. Don't forget a label, there are 27 plants. That's your answer for B. Great problem. Number nine. I'm supposed to multiply six times four times three times two times one times zero. I'm not doing any work. The answer is zero. What property is that? That's the zero property is what I write down. You can write the zero property of multiplication if you want, but multiplication is the only one. So save our time doing the work. It had a zero in it. It's done. Number 12, write the prime factorization of each number. I'm going to start with 32. I'm going to do division by primes. Divide by 2 is 16. Divide by 2 is 8. Divide by 2 is 4. Divide by 2 is 2. Divide by 2 is 1. Is 1. It doesn't fit on my screen. There it is. Is 1. Got the 1 at the top. All my divisors are the prime factorization. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the fifth power. B is 900. 900 I'm going to do with a factor tree. I'm going to take 90 times 10. I'm going to take 9 times 10. I'm going to take 9 to 3 and 3. I'm going to take 10 to 2 and 5. I'm going to take 10 to 2 and 5. Now we're supposed to go in order. So I got this 2 and this 2. I got this 3 and this 3. I have this 5 and this 5. So I have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. C says, what's the square root of it? Guys, remember, I don't have to do the work. I take the square root of each one and I cut it in half. So there was two twos, so for letter C, I only need one two. There was two threes, this is letter C. I only need one three. This two fives, I only need one five. So you don't have to redo the work 
to be able to get to the problem. Number 13, for each fraction, write an equivalent fraction as a denominator of 60. So I have 5, 6 times something equals a 60. How do I get from 6 to 60 times 10? Do it on the top is 50. B, I have 3 fifths times something to get to 60. How'd I get there? Times 12. Do it on the top is 36. And the last one is 7 twelfths times something gives me 60. How'd I get there? Times 5. Do it on the top is 35. Good working at fraction work. Flipping your answer, key over number 16. If one card is drawn from the deck of card, what is the probability that it'll be hearts? Well, I know that there are hearts. There are spades, there are diamonds, there are clubs. So that's four different suits. Hearts is one of those suits. It's one-fourth. Number 19, I have y minus 1 and 1 third equals 2 and 2 thirds. I'm missing the first in a subtraction problem. I add them together. Now they have it written what you would say is backwards, guys but I still read left to right. So it's still y minus one and one third equals my answer. So I have three thirds and three, three thirds equals one more. One plus three is four. 21, I have five, six plus five, six plus five, six. Five plus five plus five equals 15. The sixes stay the same. Now I put the top in the box and the bottom outside the box. That goes in there twice. That's 12. I subtract, I get three. So I got two and three, six. I needed to reduce that, divide them both by three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Two and one half. 22, I have 15 over 2 times 10 over 3. I'm going to cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 1s would stay the same and equal the whole number. 24 is just a review for you if you remember this. 30 squared and square root. Square roots cancel squares. So my answer is 30. If you actually did the math, 30 squared is 900. The square root of 900 is 30. So they're just testing you to see if you remember that those things cancel. 26, write 1 and 1 half and 1 and 2 thirds as improper's. So I take 1 and 1 half, multiply this way and add that. That gives me 3 over 2. Take 1 and 2 thirds, Multiply and add gives me 5 over 3. Then it says multiply your improper fractions. Cross a 3, cross a 3. That gives me 5 over 2. Switch that into a mixed number. 2 goes into 5 2 times. That equals 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. I have 2 and 1 half again. 27. A package weighs 1 pound 5 ounces is how many ounces? This is just remembering that there are 16 ounces in a pound plus you have five more. So it's 16 plus five is 21 ounces. And last but not least, you have to turn the page to get number 30. Write an odd negative integer greater than negative three. Now guys, we would be tempted to say negative five, negative seven. That's not greater, that's less than negative three. So the only odd negative integer that is l greater then negative three is negative one. Greater means to the right, guys. So we had to move to the right. Awesome, we got our 15 done. You want some extra credit?